I can see your motive Why you getting closer Ever since I'm winning you been right by my side What's up everybody, Sam Smyers here. Today I wanna to go over how to create a slap house track and I'm going to be using my song Motive as the example today. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, welcome back to the channel and please remember to like and subscribe to stay updated with future videos that are gonna be just like this. The reference song today is my song Motive and I made this with D Love and B Martin. So let me go ahead and play you a portion of this song so you can get an idea of how it sounds. So that's the track. It's obviously a slap house track and let's just go ahead and dive right into it. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. So if you do have any questions that I don't touch on, then please go ahead and comment below so I can make sure to answer any of your questions. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how I structured this at the end. Of course, I put my BPM and key here. Just put a marker at the end to make sure that I can know what the BPM and key is when I come back to the session at a later date. And I structured it out here. So the structure is actually pretty interesting for this track. What we did is we started off with the chorus, that hook part, and then we've got the build up or the pre, and then we've got the drop. And then after that first drop, then we have the verse, and then we have the pre and the drop, and we've got an extra drop at the end here. So a pretty atypical structure there. And we basically did that because you want this intro to start off with the hook to really hook the listener. We're gonna go through my drums group first, and then I'm gonna dive into the other groups. I usually divide everything up into four or five groups. Here I have the drums group, bass group, instruments group, effects group, and my vox group. And on my drums group, I've got a solid bus compressor, a K clip for soft clipping, and then just a Pro Q3. And I'm just doing some dynamic EQing here, so nothing too crazy. So let's go ahead and check out the drums group. And basically for the verses, I'm using a re-space for the breaks sections or the verses or the pre's, whatever you want to call them, that are not the drop. So if I just play this chorus intro part here, or even this build up here, no kick, and I have a kick that comes in during the drop. So let me just zoom into that kick real quick and expand this a bit so we can see the kick there. And then I have this layer, which is actually from a Nathan Chapman pack on Splice, and he's like a country music producer. And let me just play this for you. And I thought that was like an interesting layer to add to that kick, but that's all the, the kick is. And this is just the kick. And then I grouped them into a kick group and added a bit of a drum bus here with some soft clipping. So the kick really just happens during the drop. And then for the other sections, I don't have the kick. So I've got this snare riser here. And I usually always have a snare riser or something just to add energy to a build. And then in the track. And I've got some bongos there for an extra texture. And then during the second pre, I add in these trap hats. And we can check out the pattern here. This is just gonna be the pattern, the MIDI pattern. So let me go ahead and solo the drums so far. And now let's go on to the claps here. So these are going to be the claps. And basically for the claps, what I'll often do is I'll use different claps for different sections or add on a new layer of a clap for the drop. And that's what I did here. So we can check out this first clap. And then the second clap. And these are blended together. 
And then as I get into the drop, I add on this more bright clap. And so all together that clap during the drop. And that's just two different layers of a clap. And it's a bit wider and brighter than this section during this verse here in the pre. Versus the clap in the drop here. Now let's get into the hat here. And I'm gonna expand these a bit. This is gonna be a like a hat or a shaker, and then I have a live hat. Just to give it some rhythm. And I've got a ride here during the pre or the buildup. And this live hat here. And then during the very last drop, I'm adding a lot more hats. So that's what's going on here. So let me just solo all of these hats here during this last drop. Because I really wanted to fill out that section, that last drop. So let me just play that section for you. Oh, I can see your morning. So I've got like a 909 hat, a ride end, and another hat loop there. And then down here, we've got some fills. So let's just play some of these fills. These were from D-Love, pretty cool fills. And to do that type of fill, you'll hear that pretty often in Slap House. You can do that by taking a kick and putting it on like a triplet grid and then filtering off the low end and automating it so that the low end comes back in as the fill goes later on. So you basically adjust the filter to create that effect. And then we have this percussion little hit here, which is pretty cool. So let's play that in the track. And let's go ahead and just play the drums during the drop. I'm gonna solo them. So for the first time that drop hits, just the kick. And then we bring everything in, and then for that last drop. A lot more hi-hat and percussion things going on. So that's basically all that I have for the drums there. Let's just make sure I covered everything there. And it looks like I covered everything. So now let's go on to the bass group. Let's see what I've got on this bass group here. I like using this BC160. I think it's like a DBX160. So whatever plugin company you have, or maybe you have Waves or um, the United Audio or Universal Audio, they all make a different version of this. So I just have the Native Instruments one. I like that on the bass. Pro Q, and then I've got some automation here on the filters. So basically in between sections, I'll, I'll tend to filter off the low end. And I do that because it adds this nice transition to a new section by filtering off the low end and automating it. And then when that new section hits, you bring the bass back in. So it adds more impact. So you can see I'm doing that during the build up and into the drop there. So let's check out this slap bass here. Pretty heavily sidechained. I got that from D-Love. So then I added another layer and this is just the MIDI. And this is going to be like a higher layer. So you can see that MIDI right there. And it's actually going to be a Serum preset. The I have an Amman Beck bass preset in my Serum preset pack. If you do want to check that out, I'll put a link down below. But this is the higher high layer. And those are the two layers of that slap bass. And also what I recommend you do for a slap house song is to print your bass. And then you can basically take a little portion of that and then reverse the bass and then add these little reverse bass effects. And you'll hear that pretty often in these bass drops rhythms. So you hear that little bass reverse 
that kind of leads into the next hit. And I think that adds a nice texture. And that's basically what they're doing in those Slap House tracks. So now let's move on to the Reef Space. And so for the Reef Spaces, let's just go ahead and check out the Reef Space layers here. I have this Reef Space. On, and what I do is I freeze the MIDI and then I print them. So just like a Stabby Reef, this is from my preset pack. And then another one, which is, uh, I have a similar one in my Serum preset pack if you do want to check these out. So this is going to be the first Reef Space. Layered with the Stab. For some width. And then another stab, and then all together, let's check out the respace. And there you have the MIDI right there. So pretty simple. And that's basically it for the breaks. And now let's check it out in the track so you can hear it. I'm gonna play this verse section here. Tables turn on, yeah, now I'm turning my back. I'm gonna make you learn not to burn other people like that. Oh, how the tables turn on, yeah, stop you right in your tracks. They say forgive and forget, but I can't. Yeah, I say it now, I can Pretty simple for the bass, just re-space, and then you've got the slap house basses. And so that will do it for the bass group. Let's move on now to the instruments. Let's open up our group. I've just got the compressor and then a Pro Q3. And let's check out all of the instruments. I have a lead stab here during the drop. to add some tension and that's kind of like a cream style or progressive, not really cream, maybe like a progressive house style pluck. And I believe I have this pluck in my Serum preset back too. You can tell I'm just using a lot of the presets from my Serum preset back. I've got this marimba as well. And that's just from Serum. And these are just instruments to fill up the drop. And then I have this bra bra synth as we go into the verse. So let's play the drop here. And then let's play this section so you can hear this synth. Now you taking notice. Funny how the tables turn on. Yeah, now I'm turning my back. Just to add a nice transition. And then I have another synth lead here, which is going to add some tension to that buildup. And we can check out the MIDI here if you want to see the notes. Just a E, basically, to add some tension to that buildup. And then I have this really cool like Reese stab. Which I believe was just a sample from Splice and it has this crazy Valhalla shimmer on it. So it has this really, really long reverb tail. And then these are just going to be some atmospheres. Let's play all this together. And then let's go on to the verse here. I've got some high strings here. I'm gonna make you learn not to burn other people like that. Oh, how the tables turn on. Yeah, stop you right in your tracks. And then at the ending, I have an ending ARP, just like an ARP I created in Serum. And I actually have the arpeggiator effect to create that arpeggiating sound, and then I just printed it to audio. So nothing too crazy with the instruments there. I believe that's it. Just really focusing on using the re-space to build out the track and then also the slap house bass to really drive it. Just some atmospheres and um, some synths and stuff. So nothing too crazy with the instruments. It's actually pretty sparse. So now let's go into the effects group. And for effects, I don't really like to get too detailed with the effects. They're really just going to splice find some risers and hits and things like that and just put them into your track for transitions. Like there's a transition there. 
Here's a cool vocal transition. Here's a little clap impact in the track. Here's some risers here. Got to have your risers to go into the drop. And that's really it for the effects. So just try and test out effects, find the samples on Splice or something, put them in, and then try not to use them too much. Make sure that your transitions actually sound good without the effects, and then just use the effects to amplify those transitions. So now let's go into the vocals. Now I've got the VC160 on that bus there, and then the Pro Q3, and that's it on my vocal bus. Then we have our lead vocals. And so basically, I sent this track pitched up two semitones. He sang to it pitched up, and then we pitch it down negative two semitones to get that detuned vocal effect. So let me solo this lead vocal for you. When I get back, can't lie, it feels so right with you. And let me go ahead and play you how it actually sounds. When I get back, can't lie, it feels so right with you. So that's how he sounds, and then I pitch it down negative two, and it sounds like this. When I get back, can't lie. So that's pretty common style and pretty common effect for Deep House and Slap House is basically sending your track to the singer, have them pitch it up two semitones, sing to it like that, and then pitch it down negative two semitones when you get it back, and then you'll have that detuned vocal effect. So let's maybe just check out some of the effects on this lead vocal. I have some auto-tune, and then we have a VC76 and a VC2A. And I have the auto-tune on there for an effect because I also do tune the vocals in Melodyne before and then I add in the auto-tune to give it more of that like texture because auto-tune has its own sound to it. So then we've got some Pro Q3. You can just see I'm just cutting off the low end there. And then CLA vocal, probably just using this for the compressor and also the treble Pro DS. And then the effects here. I'm using a couple of reverbs and delays and then automating some of these halls and ping pong delays. And basically, you can automate your effects during different sections to fill out the different sections depending on how many instruments are in them. And I generally recommend doing that so that you can vary up and fill out the vocals for each of the sections because it's going to depend on how much reverb you want for a section. If there's a section that has a lot of room to it, then maybe you can add more hall. If there's a lot of instruments in, then maybe you don't want all of that reverb and you want less. So for example, let's just see what I did for this hall reverb. So we can see for that verse, took out a lot of that hall reverb and then just automated it for the various sections. So after that lead vocal, I have the doubles here and let's just go ahead and play the doubles. And you may think it's weird that I'm cutting out these little sections here, but essentially for doubles, I tend to cut out the S sounds or the consonants because we don't really need them and it just helps control any of the sibilants. Motive, why you getting closer? Ever since I'm winning, you've been right by my side. Used to be so distant. And here's just a little random echo here. Okay. For that section, just put that in because let's check out the whole vocal. Didn't forget, but I can. Yeah, I say it. For some reason, I needed a little vocal echo there. We've got this low auto-tuned vocal. And then a high one. And then let's check it out all together. So just doing some effects there with the CLA Vox and a crystallizer effect for a chorus and then let's check out these high autotune vocals here just adding another texture to that second drop just to give us some variation to that vocal and then we've got these ending vocal chops and let's check out my automation here so what I'm doing is I'm actually automating the formant on this little altar boy, and that gives it this really cool effect where the vocal is changing the actual timbre of that vocal. I can see your mold. So 
So that's a little vocal production secret for you. So let's, let's go ahead and now check out the master. So we've got the solid bus compressor on the master, just using a mix bus preset and then adjusting it. I've got my K clip for my soft clipping. I have my Pro Q3 just doing a little dip there dynamically and adding a little boost right around there, maybe just to get some extra oomph out of that kick. And I've got my Ozone 9 exciter just to add some excitement to the stereo spread effects or just the sides of the track. And then I have this stereo expander in Vitalizer. And then I've got my Pro L2 oversampling for X, True Peak Eliminating, and then adjusting my output. And usually I'll try out one of these presets up here and then adjust them to get them to fit the track. So that about does it for this Slap House track. If you do want to check out the full song, I'll put a link down below for you to listen to it. If you do have any other questions, please comment down below and then I'll answer them and try to help you out if there's anything that I missed. And if you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and give a like and also please consider subscribing if you are not yet subscribed. And finally, if you are truly looking to improve your mixing skills, then check out my Modern Mix Academy. This is a full online mixing course that I created that will help you make some of the best records of your life from the comfort of your own home. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.